What up, folks? What it do? Hey, this is part two <laughs> of the best advice ever podcast of the advice is simply what you say and what people hear often aren't the same thing. So this is part two because we got a lot to talk about. got a lot to cover. So jump right into it. On the road again, Houston edition. And as I was telling you in the last episode, I do not enjoy traveling with the actual apparel that I'm going to present in. That's not, I don't like it. I'm not a big fan. I've only missed one flight in the history of, of doing this professionally. And that was my fault. There may have been some issues with uh, delays, weather, that had any nothing to do with me. And we've made adjustments. I don't, I don't think I've missed. I don't think I've missed a show in general. I don't think that I've, I may have gotten. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that if we had to reschedule a show, or show wasn't able to be done, it was far before I was traveling to it. And most. The majority of cases, I, I cannot remember a time where I was traveling to a, an event and I just didn't make it. Like I got there, it's too late, and I missed the whole thing. Like I, I've not done that. And I've done not, especially not flight travel. That, that happened one time here in, in Columbia, where there was a church that was doing like a fun day type deal. This is long. This is long ago. This is. This is why I was getting started. They were doing it on Sunday and it was in here in, 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 in Columbia where I live, but it was on the other side, like the Northeast side of town. So it may have been you know, 30 minutes from where I was, where I live. And they, they wasn't really clear on the time that I was going up. Cause we were telling them, Hey, he's going to be leaving his church service. So from when his church service ends to coming there, there may be a little bit, you know, do you have any, any, any flexibility? And they were very like, Oh yeah. Whenever he gets here, we're good. Like we'll just, you know, we'll be playing games, we'll whatever, but whatever time he gets here within this window, we're fine. Right. That wasn't the case. That wasn't the case. I got there. And folks had an attitude. Folks were like, "We would have probably been going by now, had we not been waiting on you." So there was a, there was this vibe, very aggressive vibe, about like what time were you going to be here? You, you should have been here. We you know we we we've extended this. Now they weren't paying much. I'm, my camera in in that I'm recording on costs more than what I was making. <laughs> <laughs> and I know specifically what I was making because I sent it back to him. Now, let me, tell, let me tell you this story. So I get there and I can tell there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of strife. There's a little bit of frustration about the time. Like, hey, you know, we've been, okay, you know, just, what, you know, where, where is he? You know, it's, it's the time, whatever. So that, so I get there, I can feel that. I feel that I'm doing my set. And, it's not a lot of people. Like a good portion of people may have left, and it's you know this is a church like small church. I'm not gonna say legalistic, but I could tell it wasn't a lot of joy, right? Like not a lot of happiness. Very, very tight, super tight. So I'm doing my set, I'm doing my stuff, and I talk about my fraternity. I bring up the fact, join fraternity in college. I got, I got like a whole bit, a whole set about being a member of this fraternity. And I didn't know it in the moment, but, you know, so I was already, I was on a fine line. Like, they were laughing. We were doing, the show was going okay. We were doing well. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't anything of concern. When I hit the fraternity material, it was like a hard, like, but I didn't, I didn't sense it. I wasn't, I wasn't savvy enough. I hadn't, I hadn't been doing comedy long enough to, to identify that, oh, they got an issue with, with this material. So I, I kind of struggled through that material because it's a nice little block. You know, I talk about going to college, doing this fraternity, you know, older women hitting on you at the church. 
not getting a lot of responses. And so I think, you know, I would navigate into some other material. And it was one of those shows that just like, there was like, when people said there's more month than money, I felt like there was more time than material. Like, I just felt like, whew, I look over the clock and I'm like, hey, I only did 16 minutes. I got to do, I got to do 30 minutes. I look back at the clock. Oof. I've done 28. No, I've done 26 minutes. I still got four more minutes. It was one of those where it's like, ha, ah, it was not sweatless. It was, uh, it was toiling. You know, I, I was, I was, I was, I was scuffling. I was scuffling with these folks. We was wrestling. We was trying to, but it, it, overall, you know, even, even in my, I'm, I'm the type of performer. I'm, I'm, I'm constantly evaluating what I've done. Even in a poor performance and something that just didn't connect, didn't go well, wasn't my best. I'm still giving you an 89, 90 presentation. Now it's not, I didn't knock it out of the park, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't flub. You know, I didn't, I didn't just, just flat out stank up the joint. It might not have been the best ever. It might have not been a standing ovation worthy. But even in my worst performances, even when things aren't going well, I, I'm giving you a, a I'm gonna get a B minus, maybe high C, 80, 80, 87, 86. And I'm 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 in the eighties. Now this twenty percent of that, this you would be like, oh man, that boy took advantage of us, waste our time. But and there's only two events I've sent money back to. This is one of them. I sent money back to this. So I, I get through it. You know, we make it through and it's whatever. It's okay. They, they thank you, whatever, all, all that kind of thing. But maybe the day or two after there was a phone call and I don't think it was to me. It might have been to my wife at the time who was doing the booking. And they basically brought up the fact that I talked about fraternity and that they, they, they didn't believe or endorse fraternities uh many folks you know you'll see people online renouncing their affiliation with with fraternities now i joined the fraternity in college was i a christian when i i joined yeah i was no 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 i got i, I got saved my sophomore year so I, I was a christian in philosophy and in, in by by identification but i wasn't I wasn't active in my faith. I wasn't practicing my faith. And I, I, I've not encountered anything within my fraternity experience that made me feel like, oh, I've renounced. I've done something that is uh, demonic or is against my faith. So when folks are announcing and they say the Lord told them, dude, I'm just like, well, that's weird. Um, my, my pastor also talk, often talks about how many people he's been able to minister to or, or lead to to Christ by virtue of being in his fraternity and having access to folks that that come in and find seek him out about spiritual matters, right? And I have similar experiences of folks that over the years of like, hey man. I need you to pray for me. I mean, I need to talk to you about some challenges that I'm experiencing. You know, I'm, I'm really having this crisis of identity of faith. Right. So that, but I, in that, in that day, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't, we didn't have, we didn't have a call. Yeah. <laughs> these were the days we just, they paid their money and that it was no call before these, the topics to avoid. There was nothing like that. So they ended up, communicating that the fraternity, I was late. I think that was one of the first concerns. I was, I wasn't on time and that I did this material on fraternities and they just were not good with that. And I, I, and I was like, I said, you know, I'll send the money back. And I did, I sent the money back. I wrote up a, I wrote up a, uh, <laughs> I wrote up a little letter and I put their check back in that envelope and I sent it to, I think they sent it back to me. Cause they were like, Oh no, no, no. They, they never, maybe they never cashed it. Maybe. Cause I think I didn't, I, I'm, I may have sent their check back or I may wrote, written them a check for the amount that they gave me. 
I might have done that because I don't think they ever cashed the check or they they might have sent the check back. But that I was you know, I've always been of the opinion. Now there <laughs> there was some other times folks were like, hey, you should send us our money back too. Like, nah, we 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 you know, we good. <laughs> I deserve that money. But that was one of the instances I just like, I mean, I'm not gonna go back and forth with these folks about things that I didn't know. I didn't, you know, again, the the late part, they were giving me the impression that, yeah, if you get here by this time, you'll you'll be fine. And then that kind of changed. And then the fraternity stuff, again, I didn't know. I didn't know that that, that would cause an issue in their congregation. I don't even know how I got to that story. How I got that story. But anyway, that is, oh, yeah, I was talking about missing shows, right? So the only other time, there's one time that I've missed a flight. This was a flight to Vegas. I had a show out in Vegas. And I ended up, I think it was like a 530, whatever. And I just didn't make it. I, I maybe got to the airport late. By the time I made it over to the gate, the flight had gone. The flight had departed. And, you know, this has been a number of years ago. And it wasn't that many. Maybe it was like three flights out of Columbia to Vegas. And I think the next flight didn't leave until like 2 o'clock. And I'm, I think I went home and, and put on my clothes because I had to actually travel Basically, it was one of the scenarios. Once I, I got there, I was literally getting out of the car, putting my bag over in the corner and walking onto stage. Like it was that type of once I made it to the hotel, I was walking up on stage. And then that was a that was not a good performance either. It was a good performance, but I hit some content. So I had some content. I had jokes back then that were not you know, LGBTQ appropriate or or not say appropriate, but they were the targets. There was some jokes out there. I did this joke back in the day about when I joined the army, I joined doing the don't ask, don't tell, you know, President Clinton enacted don't ask, don't tell. And I was just like, some people you ain't got to ask. You could just tell. I've learned that's a mean, that's, that's, that's a slight. It's mean. And I may have had, I, I, I do this joke about the beautiful thing and same sex marriages. So I had like maybe like three chunks of content that were related to that community. And again, I, I've never written malicious jokes. I'm not even even if I take a shot at somebody, it's it's a, it's a it's a very faint, it's a little slap. I'm not I'm not rearing back and punching right. But I had. <laughs> I had that content. Let's say I, let's say I had a, a seven minutes of it. And and I typically would not do it all one place. I might do one here, one there. Well, in this particular instance, I think this, I was doing, and I was doing something for a church. I was doing something for an organization. And they had just signed an alliance with that community because they were going to work on HIV and AIDS testing. It, it was a, a collaboration between uh, that community and this particular faith community. And they, they, those folks were at this event and I didn't know any of this cause I was late. If I would have been in the room, if I would have seen some of these things, I would have been able to navigate a little differently. I didn't know that. So I get into my set and I did like all those jokes as like a, a chunk, like all together one, which I never do. Like, cause I'm never like, Oh, let me do the jokes about gays. Let me do the jokes about like I'm just navigating through my content and for whatever reason it was like this joke, which probably would have been fine. One joke, ha ha, got funny guy. Everybody talks about everybody, but then it was another one. Then it was another, and I got I mean I got an email. I got emails about that particular event about the alliance and the, the, the you know they're trying to build community with 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 different folks and diversity of opinions and. So I missed that flight. I had that happen. And uh, it was just like one of those scenarios like Calgon, take me away. Because again, there are some jokes that I've done over the years that's 
tradition, you know, consistently gotten some some feedback that that it's like, all right, man, I'm not telling jokes for folks to be emailing me, and I'm not the type of comedian that I'm not Dave Chappelle. I'm not, I'm not standing on the corner of society and humor and all my thoughts are reflective of what we are anticipating. No, I'm talking about my life as a husband, as a father, as a a person of faith, a, a man of God and how I navigate my existence and, and, and all of those components. So I'm not trying to make big broad statements and I'm not, of the of the elk that comedians are the last truth tellers and isn't i mean i want you laughing and enjoying my show if i get you to think about something a little different that's fine that's but that's not that's not the be all end all of what i'm trying to accomplish so that that's the only time i've missed a flight and had you know kept getting ah oh, it was bad oh, even to think about it is bad i'm sure i have the the um stub somewhere in the house because that like I put that date in some things like this date will never happen again. I refuse to be in a scenario like that. So I don't miss flights. I don't miss flights. What does happen is connections fall through, weather happens, you got to get a rental car. Like I've done some of those things to navigate to get to places where I'm supposed to get. But I just don't miss flights. So when I get to the airport on Saturday morning, I had this little bit of uneasy feeling and these storms grounded everything that was headed into Atlanta. So now this is where the stress tax comes flaring because with the flights delayed, and this is even before we even get on the flight, we don't even board yet. We're sitting in the gatehouse and they make the announcement. And so pretty immediately I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to miss my connection. Not thinking that the flight also that I'm going to be getting on is coming in and that's going to be delayed. And that's what ended up happening. I I ended up having no issues other than getting into Houston a little. So I was supposed to get into Houston at 10 o'clock. I got into Houston at 1130. Now that gave me, I wanted to be at my event by one just to be in there and, and to get some perspective which I think I still had enough time to do that. But the stress, the the stress tax comes in when they make the announcement. I'm looking at the connections and I'm like, okay, I'm not going to make that. And then Delta in many cases will automatically rebook you. So I look at the app and now they got me at the nine o'clock out of Atlanta, like 9 PM that night. Cause there's only three. There's the, I guess the early one, the one that I was supposed to be on the next one that was, I was going to miss. Then the next one going at the hobby wasn't until 9 PM, which my event, I was supposed to be there at one forty-five. There's no reason for me to even be on that flight. So now I'm up at the counter. I'm talking to the counter person and we're like, Hey, I'm like, this is the deal. And she was like, okay, well that's standby. We'll have you on. It was like, could you fly into Bush? which is, you know, uh, Houston has two airports, Hobby, Bush. I said, I can, but I had a rental car at Hobby. So I had this rental car. If I fly in the Bush, then I would have to get an Uber to the event. That's a different, I got to cancel the, the rental car, all, all these things I'm thinking about. Then that, that's what causes distress. Now, I'm at this point in my life where I'm like, none of this stuff has happened. So I haven't. I haven't taken the money out and put it in the stress tax, but I'm looking at this may be my tax bill. But once I put in some paperwork, we can bring that down significantly. So that's where I was. And so they ended up putting me on a like maybe if I didn't if I didn't make my connection, I would have gotten into Bush. They put me on a connection to Bush that would have got me there at like twelve thirty. Now, again, I still got to make it to the event that was like 40 miles, 40 minutes away. But again, all that worked out. We got to. So we ended up getting out of Columbia, getting to Atlanta, and then even Atlanta was delayed and it was delayed. And then my app wasn't 
apping. <laughs> it wasn't showing up the way that I needed. And so that's the stress. That's the stress. Like, am I going to make now? I'm starting to think, should I left yesterday? I'm, you know, because this is the money. You make the money when you go do the event. There's no, there's no like when I was working at Heathwood and we had inclement weather and I get to stay at home, but I'm still getting a check. That's not how this works out here in entrepreneurial land. If I don't kill the bear, we don't eat bear meat. I don't know if that's a good analogy, but I don't kill it. We don't eat it, right? And this was a big kill. This was a significant this is a significant trophy. And now I'm counting my brain like, oh, 145, should I left? Should I have left yesterday? And now I got the stress tax is coming because I'm starting to second guess. Okay, moving forward, would it make better sense to go ahead and come the day before, then try to catch the flight out? It just navigating all that stuff mentally and has not had the decision still hadn't need to be made. It, that's the stress. It, it gets very stressful of hypotheticals and potentials. And if this doesn't happen in that, so ultimately we make it to Houston, like I said, at like 1135, I get my rental car. I, my location <laughs> to where I'm presenting is 40 miles away. Much like Wednesday, much like Tuesday, it's 40 miles. But when I left Tampa, I left Tampa to go to St. Pete. When I left Hobby in Houston, I drove 40 miles and was still in Houston. That's what I said when I got up. I was like, yo, I know we say Texas is big, but look, this is ridiculous. I drove 40 minutes and I'm still in Houston. Like I told him, I said, man, well, I live in South Carolina. If I left my house and drove 40 minutes, I'm in North Carolina. I drove 40 minutes in Houston. The radio station changed four times. It went from like smooth R&B hits to gospel rap music to Latino music to classical music, like four Radio, I did not do anything to the radio station. I just had it on. I went through four stations in 40 minutes, and I still was in Houston. But I made it. I made it to the event. And it was an event for a school district called A-Leaf. They had a family conference. They they basically want to invite parents out, spend a day finding out about the programs. A really good, really good school district out of, out of Houston. And I was the keynote speaker. Now, I was a little bit under the impression I was doing stand-up, like 30 minutes of stand-up. I get there, I was like, oh, I'm the keynote. So I had my things ready, but it was still like, oh, man, I thought I was just doing a set. But I had to do a, you know, a speech, a keynote presentation, which was heavy, heavy comedy. But it was one of those scenarios of like, bro, this is so stressful. Now I finished, right? I finished my presentation and they, the conference goes on and they, they give giveaways. They had some other things they were doing. So I go back and I'm trying to, I'm trying to get the girls, South Carolina girls are playing at two o'clock. So by the time I get off the stage, it's about halftime. So I, I'm, I have the app where I can listen to the game. I get back in the car and now I, my hotel that I, now this was a great thing that happened which I didn't know before doing it. But the hotel that I booked, I booked a hotel close to the airport. because so I knew I had to drive out to the event, but I said it makes more sense for me to have the hotel close to the airport as opposed to where the event is. And I got to get up in the morning and drive back towards the airport. So I drove, by this time, it's an hour back to the airport because there's more traffic. And Houston has the traffic. Like, Arby has the meets. Houston has the cars. There's all the cars. They're good cars, bad cars, long cars, short cars, trucks, V8, uh, SUVs, Humvees. I mean, it's all kind of, and it's a lot of roads that were closed. And I'm out here. And then that those are the times where people want to call you and ask you questions. And like, hey, I'm trying to get through this city. Please don't call me right now. So I drove another hour. I made it back to the hotel. Now, the benefit was my hotel 
was right next to the Enterprise car spot. So I ended up getting back to the hotel. I got gas coming back in. And I just drove the car over there and walked back to the hotel. And I took the shuttle. I took the shuttle to the airport in the morning, which was another issue because I asked them, I said, hey, how often does the shuttle run? And they basically like, well, just come down about five, 10 minutes before you want to leave. So my boarding time that that morning was at 520, right? So I wanted to get in the lobby at 530, a little bit before 530 because I wanted to leave at 430, a little bit before 430 because I wanted to leave at 430, but I didn't I didn't do that. So by the time I got to the lobby, it might have been like 430, like I got to the lobby at 430. Nobody in the lobby. Lobby's empty. I'm talking about there's nobody at the desk. And the shuttle's gone. There's no shuttle. So I'm waiting. I walk through the door a couple of times, thinking somebody's going to come out of the back. No one ever comes up. So I wait for about like eight minutes. And, I, and a few times I thought maybe I could just walk over to Enterprise and get on their shuttle and <laughs> go to the terminal. But I didn't. I waited. Guy shows up. About eight minutes later. So it was like 4.34, 4.38. So the shuttle pulls up. I'm thinking, I'm used to when a shuttle pulls up that the driver will get out and come in and say, hey, anybody? That that didn't happen. The shuttle was just there. Then there was some some girls that come down at the same time. They'll get snacks or something. very bizarre. These two girls come down and they were like over in the convenience center. I'm waiting for the driver to come out and say, hey, whatever. So he didn't come out. So I walk out and I'm like going to the, like, yeah, get on, get in. So I get in. It's just me. It's me and this driver. He hoodied up. He got, uh, he in layers. And he's blasting R&B music. He's like, blast, it's four o'clock in the morning. And he's like, I guess Tyrese has a new song out. So he's like, yo, this Tyrese song sound pretty good. Like, so he blasted it. Then like uh Miguel, Manuel, Miguel, this guy comes on next, right? It's four o'clock in the morning. This guy blasted. And so we we having a conversation, because he's telling me, I think I asked him, do you know how how often does the shuttle run? He was like, Yeah, he works from 10 to 6 and I guess it's just on a loop like people get in they take some he comes back somebody's getting he takes them. so we having that conversation he's telling me you know oh yeah but I'm, I'm off this Saturday and um, the, the final four is in town and he's a big WWE guy and I'm like oh, okay cool and so we ride man R&B blasting and then this man is basically like hey man I gotta ask you this man What's that cologne you got on? And I'm like, oh, uh. but it wasn't like, hey, what's that cologne you have on? He's like, hey, man, I wasn't going to say nothing, but man, you back there smelling good. Like it was a very, you know, kind of banter. Boy, you back there smelling like a million bucks. You know, like, I was going to ask you what you're doing later on this morning. So we kind of joking, but it's, it's four o'clock in the morning. It's a grown man. And he asked me what. My fragrance, my perfume, my cologne. So I said, oh, yeah, man, this is, uh, I guess I had a Prada or something. Super uncomfortable. And we were not at the airport. Like, we still had, I mean, it wasn't a long drive, but it was too long for this conversation. To be having R&B music playing. What you're not going to do is ask me my cologne fragrance. Oh, uh, And now, like I said, I, the older I get, I'm more, I, I'm thinking about other people. I was like, so what, what if? I was a woman and like would he because I felt uncomfortable as a dude. I like, man, this guy's out of control. So yeah, y'all, I, I wanted to give all that content. That's part two of this, of this, of this episode. <laughs> There's some other things I'll talk about in, in, in upcoming episodes. I did get a QA question. So I'll, I'll address this question. For my guy, Richard, he says, always enjoy your content style of comedy, material, good, clean, funny, refrain from controversial, offensive, 
subjects without curse words. What other comics like yourself would you recommend? I tune in to for some variety, but you know you're still my boy, right? <laughs> so basically, I, I I had a couple of ideas. The first thing, if you want to hear clean comics, just go to Dry Bar Comedy. I think there's a great variety of folks that that did work clean. Now I don't know if this it's out of my brand, you know. I'm, I'm not. I'm again. I, I write jokes where a hundred percent of the room I want to laugh. Not that I wouldn't write a joke that you know may cause if you were politically on the right, it made you feel away. Or if you politically on the left, it made you feel away. Like I'm trying to write the funniest jokes, and so I'm not intentionally not being controversial. But typically, controversial isn't super funny unless you find the funny in it. So dry bar com- comics, if you're looking for clean in particular, uh, folks that I, I just kind of noticed some people, uh, Brian Regan is a, is a comedian. It's pretty clean, hilarious material. Je- Jim Gaffigan, Michael Jr., of course, Nate Bergazzi, Dustin Nickerson is, is a guy, a friend of mine. There's also Johnny W. is a guy. Mitch Hedberg is a, he's no longer living. But you might. I don't. I don't. I don't think he's clean. But he's not super dirty. I mean, I, I would. I would tread lightly on Mitch Hedberg if you are listening in your car with your kids or something. But if if you wanted to check out some Mitch Hedberg, I, I I just love his sense of humor. I don't. I hadn't listened to him in a while, but I didn't think he was overly graphic in his in his language. Kev on stage also is is another guy that works clean, and I, I think would would fit that brand and what you were looking for i was thinking of some some ladies in particular but i think that the dry bar will cover because there's a number of a leanne mcdonald what's his name leanne morgan leanne morgan is in dry bar there's a number of very funny women that are also on the dry bar app or just so just look for dry bar comedian and i think that will help you out there rich rich also told me about the the church of Deion Sanders with Deion was lifting those weights and his son didn't have it. Hey man, there's something about dad's strength. There's something like, Hey, I'm not going to let my boy lift more weights than me. That's just, that's not going to happen. It's not going down. So thank y'all. Thank y'all. I, I had a lot to get over, get through in this episode. This is unorthodox episode two episode bonus. Bonus at my, uh, we do an open mic here in Columbia at the art bar and, <laughs> when they have other folks that they add on to, they add on to the the, the sign up sheet later in the night. They call it bonus comics. So they were like, boo, 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 bonus. So I guess I can be, I've just given you a bonus episode that's gone a little bit over my standard time. But thank y'all so much for rocking with me. I hope you enjoyed. It. I had a lot to get off, a lot to get off my chest. It was a lot on the road, a lot happening, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Look forward to seeing you again next week. It's your boy, Mike Goodwin, man. Do all the things. Like, subscribe, share. If you have any questions, email us at info at comedianmikegoodwin.com. Thank you again. Like my aunt would say, be good. But if you can't be good, be good at it. And y'all have a good one.